smiling at me as so many times before. I never wanna be away, leave you again. You are all I want and more. It's true. Did you enjoy your scrambled egg? Wow! <laughs> Scrambled egg for tea on Good Friday, that's about right, isn't it? Good evening, my goodness. <laughs> this is the first time I've sat down in front of my camera today and it's half past six in the evening. I um, was hoping I'd have time to chat this morning, but I stayed in bed for quite a bit longer than intended because I was just so happy and comfy and enjoying my lion. <laughs> And then this morning, me and the kids tidy the house. I'm so proud of them. Getting them to tidy and actually tidy and it not be a big drama has been a long, 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 long journey. Oh, we have tears. Soup, sweetie. Are you ready for your carrot bath? Yeah. Yeah. So yes, I was just saying how um, amazing you were at tidying up this morning. You were great, weren't you? Yeah. I asked her to tidy up her bedroom, which she did, and then I found her tidying up the living room. And then we did that big table together, didn't we? Yeah. Cleared it all up and we did some lovely Christmas, uh, Christmas? Easter crafts this afternoon. And we did some organizing, which is my favorite and Jeff's favorite. Yeah, you guys love to organize, don't you? Yeah. And uh, I. And I'm also very funny. You are very funny and modest. <laughs> um, I also I hid all the little chicks and the bath bombs, and all the kids love doing that. Even the eldest, who's like nearly thirteen, like just loves. I already found two. You found so many. I they just love that. Who doesn't love a hunt? So we had a really fun afternoon. It was loud. It was noisy. It was long, but it was so nice to have the whole family together. Oh look, Professor Penrose. <laughs> you look so cute. Do you know who you look like? Daddy. Mirabelle. I look like Mirabelle. Yeah, she's got cool glasses. But these are not the same ones. The no, green. they're not. They're not the same colour. And um, my dress is not the same colour. No. Ah! If you really need to get you a big Mirabelle dress. Go on, off you go. Again. Oh my god, he's going to piano. Can you shut the door? Love you, baby. So yeah, it was a wonderful family afternoon, but this morning took longer to kind of sort out and tidy up than I thought it would, but that was fine. I was literally finishing off diffusing my hair and my in-laws arrived. We're looking a bit bedraggled now because it's the end of the day, but we've had a very successful wash day. Like, look at all these big fat ringlets. Aren't they so wonderful? Ready. Uh, I haven't had a chance to fully go through all the comments on yesterday's vlog yet. Um, oh, there's so many holes everywhere. I don't know. Um, but a few of you have said yes, we'd like to know your curly girl routine. So what I'm going to do, because I've I've obviously filmed today, but I don't think I have enough content for a whole vlog. And I'm so unbelievably exhausted, I'm just going to get my PJs on and relax for the end of the night. So I'm going to combine today and tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a super chill day anyway, just lots of relaxing and hopefully lots of knitting. So it's probably a good idea to stitch these two days together. And it means I've got a night off editing. I know it's only been two days, but it, it's good for me and my mental health when I'm daily vlogging. So I am going to wrap this up here because I don't want to get too blabbery I just wanted to say yeah had a lovely lovely good Friday it was great fun I love these family occasions and it was super nice to have my husband's parents here as well they don't usually aren't they don't normally live near us they're just here short like before they move abroad at the end of the year so it was lovely to have them here as well and they got to you know catch up with my parents and my family and yeah it's just lovely. So I hope you all also had a good, good Friday. <laughs> and I'll catch up with you guys in the morning. Good night. There's a new day that will come again tomorrow.
wash away the pain There's a new day to take away your sorrow And the old ways get washed out by the rain It is quite far into the afternoon. Yep, it's three o'clock. <laughs> I've had lovely Saturday. Um, a very much needed quiet morning. I was in bed doing some intentional scrolling, some like happy scrolling, some comments, and I did a Q&A over on my story. So I've been doing quite a lot of that today, which is always fun. It's always really interesting what people want to know. <laughs> Um, and then I went for a run and oh, I think it might have been my best run so far and not like best performance wise, my best just, it was just so lovely and, in, and enjoyable and wonderful. I got up this morning and I had a big bowl of porridge with like loads of stuff in it and was like, right, lots of slow release carbs and quite a bit of protein and just, yeah, lots of fuel. And then I went out for my run and I went so slowly, mindfully slowly. Like, I think one of the biggest mistakes people make when they start running is they go too fast, too quick. And I've made that mistake pretty much every time I've like started running again. Um, but I went mindfully so slowly. And I added an extra K on to my best distance. Not my best distance ever, I'm nowhere near that. This girl's done a half marathon. I just mean like, this stint of running and it was an effortless extra K and it was just so wonderful. I ran around the field, the sky was so big and open and blue and cloudy and there were birds, I saw robins, I saw blue tits, there were people and it was just wonderful and I, I, I'm quite lucky in that like the loop that I do around like the fields and stuff is it's about it's about 4k back to my house but I like got back to the village and just kind of continued around the village and it was just just lovely got home had a shower had a lovely lunch scrambled eggs on toast to get that protein in for recovery but i added harissa if you haven't had harissa in your scrambled eggs you must try it it's so so yummy and i also had like a load of nibbly bits left over from the party yesterday like veggie sticks and cheese and bits and pieces and it was just yummy and now i'm full and i'm happy and i am ready for a good stint of crafting <laughs> upstairs is a bit of a bomb site i'm i'm in my spare room but i'm downstairs my house is weird it's like kind of upside down kind of on one level it's weird but yeah, upstairs is a bit crazy. That's okay because the kids have just been playing all day and I don't mind mess from playing. They'll help tidy it up later, but it's not the most relaxing place to be. So I might do a bit of tidying and then sit down and knit. Don't know what I'm gonna knit on, but I'm gonna knit nonetheless. And I thought I'd show you what I got up to last night because I didn't do any knitting. I sat down and we watched an episode of Three Body Problem which I'm very much enjoying. My husband has just finished the first book. We've got five episodes in and he, we've decided to stop watching it because my husband thinks it's, it's about to start going into the second book, even though it's the first series of the TV show. So we've paused it because he wants to read the second book. And in the meantime, I'm going to listen to the first book and the second book so we can catch up and then continue watching it and hopefully we won't get any spoilers in the meantime but it's very very good oh it's so good I love it I'm really excited to listen to the book 
But yeah, I sat down and we watched the telly. And I did some crochet. I did a little bit into my, my just my scrappy big like random bits and pieces one and I added a couple of hexagons to my hexy blanket. If you've seen my latest podcast you will know that I wasn't sure whether to keep my orange hexy or not. Known fondly as Mr Orange and <laughs> I love the fact that all the comments on that video refer to it as Mr. Orange as well. Because <laughs> I asked, should I keep it, should I not? And everyone's like, yay, Mr. Orange, or get rid of Mr. Orange. And I'm like, <laughs> referring to it as Mr. Orange feels like one of my little like weirdo moments. And I love that all these other people are joining me in my weirdo moment. And I love it. I just love those weirdo moments. What happened to Mr. Orange? Well... He is no more. I got rid of Mr. Orange. Now I'm also questioning the two that I added yesterday. And part of the problem with Mr. Orange is he was he was over here by this blue one. And it was just, because they're like com complementary colors, it was too much over there. And I also looked through all my scraps and mini skeins and stash that I've got for this blanket. And there's hardly any orange, like hardly any at all. And I have also just ordered a um, a little set from the Fibre Fox of Minis from one of their old advents that they found. So they were like, you know, selling off like not too expensive. Um, and it's all pinks and purples to add into this. Um, so I'm thinking, yeah, I'm not going to be doing the oranges or the yellows. And I'm sticking to pink, purple, like white, beige, grey, blue and potentially green. Now I think the problem I've got here was the same as the orange and the blue is that I've got two brights next to each other. A little bit of bright is fine, but I think when we've got the two next to, next to each other, it's just a bit much. Or am I massively overthinking it? Yes, yes I am. <laughs> so I'm just gonna leave that there. Also, I feel like this one is way bigger than this one. I think my tension might be relaxing a little bit. So. Um, I am a little bit worried about that. So I might measure them and compare and it might be time to go down a hook size because I am getting better at it. I'm getting more relaxed. I'm not too sure. Also, I don't really care. I'm not that bobbed. <laughs> I'm not adding them in any particular order. I'm not even like going, I'm not like going round and round or in, across or anything. I'm just adding them where I think they look good. And I will get to a limit, I think. And I think overall, I'm. I might like fill them in and make the edges straight like you do like a half hexagon so that I've got like a rectangular blanket rather than like a it, like a jaggedy edge I just prefer that look but I've not seen how I do that yet so we'll see but there you go I really enjoyed working on that last night and honestly I might add a few more in now I might put some more around here or just I don't know just go with it it's so much fun it really is lovely. Um, so, I feel like there were some things I needed to clear up or talk about. Oh, thank you to everybody who let me know about catching a cold when you're cold and wet. So far, we're good. However, apparently, the main thing is that being cold and wet lowers your immune system, so you're just more susceptible, especially if your body is already fighting a virus that's in you already, and it might be fine fighting it off and you've not noticed you've got it, but if your body's then got to work to keep you warm and dry and stuff, it hasn't got the energy to fight the virus as well. So let's, for example, say I've got the virus that Mr. Penrose had last week and I get cold and wet and that virus takes over. That could happen. Um, hopefully that won't happen. I feel fine. I feel great, actually. I feel the best I've felt in a long time. So that's the whole thing about the colds. And then the other thing was curly hair routine. So yesterday I had a very nice wash day and I didn't wash my hair after my run today, which felt weird but I don't wanna be washing my hair all the time. Also, like the temperature was really mild today. I didn't get hot, I didn't even get like sweaty in my neckline or anything like that. It was like just spot on. So I didn't wash it. I just had my shower, I did my makeup and then I like sprayed my hair with water and a little bit of leave-in conditioner. It just, just in the ends, literally, it, cause this is where it needs it. Um, and then I did diffuse, which I don't normally do when I refresh. I normally just let it dry, but I wanted it to be dry. I didn't want to have wet hair and I wanted it to look nice for you guys. I'm really pleased with this like second day refresh. 
it had gotten really stretched out actually overnight like everything was much more kind of like I mean, can't grab it like that but I've actually like gained a bit of bounce and curl back and my ringlets are ringletting and loving life so um product wise I will show you properly on my next wash day and talk about it a little bit more in depth then just because I can't be bothered to go upstairs and get all my products um so yeah I will go into a bit more in depth with it when I am alone in the house and I can share the products and all this kind of stuff and yeah I will do that for those of you who want it during vlogmas this year I like did like almost like a beauty makeup routine one morning and I was so worried that everyone's gonna be like who are you you're a knitting channel people really enjoyed it so we're gonna do a curly hair routine as well um and then the other question that I was asked was if I could explain a little bit about my knitting journey and this is good for me today because I've just done a Q&A on my Instagram where I kind of explained it um but I did say I'd go more in depth here so for those of you who don't know it's weird because I've obviously talked about this before but then you kind of forget that people new people come to my channel all the time and this might be the first video you see or you don't know all that information and most people aren't going to go back and watch every single video you've ever made some people do and that makes me feel so incredibly special when people do that I know there's someone right now who's gone back and watched every single one from the beginning and they've like commented on all the podcasts and it's just oh it makes me feel like like that's a commitment I've got like over 100 videos <laughs> so thank you to that person but um yeah so my knitting journey I've been knitting for five years and I started knitting when I found out I was pregnant with Penny my daughter I hadn't ever knit before I dabbled in crochet when I was younger but it didn't really stick with me um, and I was actually watching a vlog from some random person and they had this yarn that was like a long string of yarn and it had loops attached to it and you would lay that out and then you'd lay another piece along the top connected and you'd pull the loops through and you just kept doing that back and forth and you'd make a blanket and I was like that looks so fun so I found this yarn on eBay and did it and made a blanket I don't even know where that blanket is I don't even think I have it anymore but it was so fun and it was like a little introduction into the way the knit stitch worked and that was it. I was like, right, I want to do this properly now. So I remember Mr. Penrose went out to our local. We had like a, we've got like a sewing shop who had some yarn and needles and he just picked some like random yarn. It was lovely Bourgeois de France yarn, actually really lovely stuff and some needles. And I just did it. I just found a YouTube tutorial and I just had a go. I can't remember what my very, very first ever project was, but the first thing I finished was booties I made like a little pair of booties with pom-poms on for my nephew at the time and I then made a pair of booties for Penny which I used in my like gender announcement post on my like personal Instagram my little pink pair of things and that was just from a YouTube video and then I kind of started trying to read patterns and all this kind of stuff which is the hardest thing about learning isn't it? isn't it learning to read patterns my goodness and then I just kind of found the knitting community on Instagram and started making knitting friends and learning more and sharing more and all that kind of stuff and I just yeah I definitely hyper focused on it and it was a strong hard hyper hyper focus for a long time and I learned very very quickly this is one of the things I love about my neurodivergent brain is that I can learn things so fast. I can absorb so much information so fast as long as it's in the way that works for me. So, um, or uh, visually or by doing, if I can physically do it, it's like once I've done it once, I can do it again. I'll probably do it better the second time. And I can, I'm just a sponge when it comes to learning academically I really struggle because if I've got no interest in the subject or it's something complicated or difficult no but if it's something I have an interest in I'll be an expert in a week it's always been that way <laughs> and I love that um so that's what happened with the knitting but it stuck the hyper focus wore off but the love for it remained and it's oh it's so good when that happens um and then yeah I think I started designing well even when I first started knitting I was um making my own stuff up, making my own patterns, self-drafting, right from the beginning because I couldn't find the things I wanted. I didn't really know about Ravelry. I've got my my good friend who was the only person I knew at the time who was a knitter, was kind of guiding me and she suggested things. And my first jumper was the flax, 
or is it the rye? One's a sock, one's a jumper. The tin can knits jumper that's got like a guard strip down here. That was my first proper garment. Oh, are you going out, darling? You're very glam. Somebody's been raiding mummy's jewellery stand. <laughs> you okay? What's beautiful? Oh, my yarn. Well, Penny just saw the Easter eggs that the Easter Bunny is supposed to be bringing tomorrow. So I've now got to go to the shop. <laughs> I can't give them to her because she'll know that I bought them. <laughs> so yeah, great, now I've got a job to do. Hmm. So yes, um, designing wise, I was always kind of like, just having a go at things and trying things. It's, I've always thought this is weird. When it comes to things like learning a new craft or a new skill, I am fearless. I will try anything, I'll like, just give it a go. I'm not worried about getting it wrong or failing or having to start again. But when it comes to like life and being an adult and all that kind of stuff, I'm like terrified of new things. <laughs> but well, no, not so much anymore. I'm getting better. Yeah, and then I was just like knitting more and more and more and found my little online community and started watching knitting podcasts. And I decided randomly, completely randomly, I hadn't even been thinking about it for a while. I just suddenly decided one afternoon, Penny was having a nap. Uh, Mr. P and Jeff had gone out. I just, the house was mid renovation. And I just sat down in a corner and filmed on my phone and did it. And that's kind of what started everything really. I think when it comes to my like, my knitting design career journey type thing. And that was nearly three years ago now. It's three years in April. So we're super close to my three year podiversary. And um, I, I don't know what I did, but I hit the algorithm and it went quite big and I gained like a thousand followers like really, really quickly. And yeah, it just went on from there and I just loved doing it. And I think it's quite a natural progression to go from podcasting to designing i know a lot of people go on about like oh yeah podcasters designers not real designers whatever and it's just like like there's there's no criteria for being a designer or not if you, you can write a knitting pattern and you sell it people buy it then you're a designer um but yeah and obviously that the, the, the designing kind of took a bit of time as well my first few releases were like pretty like average I think but then the souffle like really kind of raised my public profile and yeah things just kind of gone on from there so that's my knitting journey really and then last year not last year well yeah last year my daughter started school in September and so the past kind of six months have been my, my first kind of half a year like like full-time designing hours wise it varies sometimes it's full-time sometimes it's part-time but then if I add up all the time I spend content creating making videos I also launched my patreon last August I think and that was a huge part of my journey because it massively changed the way I work now I'm committed to making those two videos every month without fail because people have paid for them it really brought a lot of like routine and stability to my work and made my content creation feel more like work like obviously I get money through YouTube through AdSense but when you look at the like rate per hour that I get paid for making a YouTube video it's it's not even minimum wage it's ridiculous unless you've got hundreds of k and you're getting sponsorships that's where the money is in youtube and that's not where i was but that's okay because youtube is like so fulfilling for me and, and enjoyable for me just because i love to do it and you know it, it's what brings people to my design work ultimately so patreon was a huge change and a really positive change for me and i love doing it i'm still loving doing it and i can't imagine not doing that now so yeah, that's where we are with it all. That's my that's my journey from pregnant knitter to full time knitwear designer. There we go. Yay! Um, so that felt like a very long chatty bit, and I've now got to go to the shop. So I will catch up with you guys tonight for an evening segment. I think this is going to be a bit of a chunky one, but it's two days stuck together, so that'll be. If you have any questions about anything I've spoken about this afternoon, just leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. But yes, 
let's crack on with the day. Back again so soon. I'm gonna round this vlog off here because it is now five o'clock <laughs> and I spent the afternoon running around like a crazy person trying to find two matching Easter eggs. <laughs> and now I've got to make the tea and put the kids to bed and edit this vlog which is going to take me all evening so I'm going to round this up here and I will catch up with you guys again tomorrow for Easter Sunday itself the big day well it's not really a big day for us it'll just be uh Easter eggs and a roast dinner <laughs> but I'll bring you along with that um and I hope you all have a fabulous Easter and I'll catch up with you again soon bye bye